Hey, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome back to San Bernardino Zoo, where today we are building a huge habitat for gorillas. Before we start, let's take a quick look at the Jaguar Dome you can see in the background there, because the other day I caught this footage and it is so cute. Oh my God, they are adorable. Look at these little guys. We'll have to tear ourselves away though, because today we are going to be here in the African area building Gorilla Mountain. This is gonna be a fairly complex habitat with not one, but three separate viewing areas for the guests, each offering a different experience. So let's get building. The main concept for this habitat is that we're gonna have multiple viewing points for the guests and each one is gonna give them a completely different viewing experience. So while I do the groundwork for just a few of those, I'll tell you what they're gonna be. So the first one, which is gonna be here, is gonna give guests an uninterrupted view of the gorillas with no barriers, no glass, no nothing between them and the gorillas apart from a moat. The second viewing gallery is gonna give them a close up view of their feeding area through glass. And the third is gonna have two viewpoints in it. First one that will give them a very, very close up view of the gorillas on one of their climbing frames and also a view into their indoor quarters. Now we're gonna start this habitat off with three gorillas. Hopefully we will have more soon, but there's never gonna be a huge amount in here um, just cause that's the way gorilla troops uh, work and they tend to stick together. So depending on where the gorillas have chosen to sit that day or that hour or whatever time that the guests get there, it's important that we have quite a few different viewing areas so that the guests have got a much better chance of getting a really good view of them. That's the concept. So let's talk about what we're doing. So we're building a moat here for the first viewing gallery. So we're gonna be taking advantage of two fairly unique features of gorillas. Firstly, um, uniquely amongst the apes, they are very big and very heavy. And secondly, they cannot swim at all and they avoid water wherever possible. So when we're building a moat to keep them in, we can just have a tiny bit of water and that'll be enough for them to not want to go into it. But we need to build it uh, with a slope like we have here, rather than just a sort of standard drop because a gorilla falling into a five meter hole is gonna do itself a lot of damage. So we can have a nice little slope down here. They can come down here if they want. They're not gonna go any further because we're gonna have some water uh, across the bottom and we're gonna join it on to the terrain that we're building up here. So I've just built one kind of slice of that moat. Uh, we're gonna make it look a lot prettier with a waterfall and a lot more foliage later on. The main part of this habitat is inspired by the gorilla habitat at San Diego Zoo, uh, which is really nice. Um, so the front of it is heavily inspired by that. Uh, the rest of it is sort of my own kind of design. Now to get the water into the moat, we are gonna use the glass barrier trick that we did with the Asian water monitor, where we're gonna mark these barriers as being not part of the habitat. And then we can hide these under the terrain and get some water in there only needs to be shallow. We don't want to risk them drowning or anything like that. This will be enough to persuade them that they don't want to go in there. And then we're going to have a sheer wall on the other side that they can't climb anyway. So that'll keep the, uh, the gorillas in. And later on, we'll work on some stuff to keep the guests out. That's the water done. We're just going to hide these glass pieces under the foliage here so that we can't see those. And that's the basics of the moat done. Let's do a bit of work now on the guest part of the habitat. So recently Frontier changed the thatch in this game so that it is now all flexi color. So for pretty much the first time ever, I'm going to do a fairly sizable build using the thatch pieces. Now you can mix and match the African, Oceanian and South American thatch. There's so much creative freedom there. I really want to get stuck into it. Now I mentioned right at the start of this area that I didn't want to do any cheesy African theming with little mud huts and the sort of Lion King Disney style African stuff. So I'm going to base this on a bar and restaurant that I saw in the Gambia uh, when I went there. Really sort of ramshackle, natural looking thatch and wood. It was a really interesting looking build. So I'm going to try and keep this in the realms of reality by basing it on that real building rather than anything else. It's not going to be exactly the same, obviously, because this is a gorilla habitat, not a restaurant. But uh, the overall effect, I think, is going to be pretty natural looking. I'm making a really random slope down this side of the habitat here with these little pieces. We're going to use loads of the circular roof pieces all copied on top of each other. So they're all slightly different shapes. And then don't worry about the holes at the top. We're going to cover those up with some different thatch pieces later on. I want this whole roof to be really random looking just to get away from the sort of perfect Disney style that you often see in zoos. We'll try and make this a bit more realistic. 
This here is the largest of the viewing galleries. This is the one that's going to be split into two so the guests can see both outdoors and indoors in the habitat. And this is where the mountain's going to end. Uh, Gorilla Mountain isn't just a clever name. <laughs> um, it is actually going to have the facade of a mountain in it as well um, as a sort of backdrop to the habitat. And then a part of it, the gorillas are actually going to be able to climb on. We're going to leave the roof there for the moment because it's time for Franchise Masters. Just a really quick one this week. We need some curved glass for the viewing windows. When you're placing glass, once you've selected the curved option, if you hold down the Z key as you're placing it, you can change the angle that it is curved at and get it absolutely perfect for the habitat that you're building. This enables you to get really smooth curves like we have here that exactly match the roof above the glass. Hope that's useful. Let's get back to the build. That's the glass barriers done. All the rest of them are going to be null barriers. Let's turn our attention to the gorilla's shelter. This is going to be really simple because every part of it that is going to be visible from the guest perspective is going to be covered up with the mountain that we're building. I should mention about the mountain, these are lowland gorillas that we have in the game, not mountain gorillas, which is why I'm not going too crazy with it. But I just thought the idea was too much fun to pass up. The majority of the habitat is going to be the sort of tropical forest that you would expect these guys to be living in. And then there's just going to be this big mountain looming up in the background with a little bit of climbing on it for them. Speaking of the forest, let's get to work on that. So we want loads of terrain changes in this habitat a to keep it interesting for the gorillas and b to make sure there's really good views for the guests so i'm building a big slope in the middle here this is where um, some of their climbing structures are going to go and then we'll have some more on the mountain itself which is going to be built as a facade to the building at the back and then we're going to do something I don't think I've done in this zoo yet, which is use the long grass as the main terrain paint for the habitat. Then we're going to use the path trick to get one of our forage feeders in. And you can see this is right in front of viewing gallery number two. So that's going to be the view for the guests there. Just adjust the terrain. And then we're going to start working on the actual waterfalls. This is going to make the moat look really attractive. This is the main thing that I took from um, the San Diego Zoo Gorilla Habitat. Once we sink these pieces in, we can cover them up with loads of rocks and then clone them all the way down this moat. It just gives a really dynamic, really lush look to it and makes the moat an actual attractive part of the habitat rather than your standard sort of bit of concrete that you try and stop the guests from looking at like the moats normally are. You might have noticed that this episode is a bit longer than normal. Normally when I do the sort of rough cut of these episodes, they're about 16 to 18 minutes long. And then when I'm recording the voiceover, I keep trimming until I've got something that's between 15 and 16 minutes and seems to flow really nicely. This habitat took so long to build that the rough cut of this episode was almost 25 minutes long. So we had a bit of a debate on the Discord as to whether to really, really chop it down or do a longer episode and it seems that literally nobody wanted me to cut the episode down to 15 minutes everyone wanted a longer episode uh, so that's what I've done I really hope you enjoy it back to the build I'm dropping some more tropical foliage into the waterfalls here a to make it look a bit more interesting and bring it to life even more and secondly to stop the um, waterfalls from looking copied and pasted as they go down along the moat here and we're going to drop some strangler fig roots in as well. Uh, I, I wonder how many builds in this zoo don't have strangler fig roots in it. They are so useful just for adding texture and interest to areas. And then like the reference photos of San Diego Zoo I was looking at, there's loads of just branches and logs and sort of deadfall all around the moat area. So I decided to replicate that with a load of the climbing branches from the habitat panel. And again, this just gives a really natural look and stops it from looking the same all the way across the moat. I'm really happy with the, the final look of the moat there. Let's get on to the main body of the habitat. I'm gonna use the soil brush with a really low intensity to paint some sort of trails in where the gorillas walk around the habitat. That always brings the habitat to life and makes it look a lot more natural. Make sure you don't have the same texture used too much. We'll drop in one of our monkey proof sprinklers for enrichment. And then we're gonna work on the back wall of the habitat. So we're gonna use our mud walls as we do so often, but these are not like completely sheer. So the gorillas could probably climb these. So what we need to do is add an overhang to the top of them. So we're gonna take some of the pieces that we already have, clone them and then spin them round and get a really natural looking overhang here that we can copy down this side of the habitat. So even if the gorillas fancy climbing up the, the roots or just using the, the natural texture of the surface to start climbing it, they're not gonna be able to get past the overhang at the top. And again, we'll uh, make sure that they stay inside the habitat. We don't want any escaped gorillas in the zoo. 
And with that done, we'll simply take the modified mud wall and then copy it all the way down the backside of the habitat so it forms an L shape and joins on with where the uh, shelter is here. Later on, we'll come back and make individual adjustments to the roots and things like that so you can't tell it's just one piece. We're going to make a little custom uh, fern using two of the basket ferns and dot these all around the habitat to make a really nice sort of tropical looking generic fern when you do that with them. And then we're on to the climbing structure. So there's going to be one big climbing structure in the centre of the habitat here. And then, like I said earlier, part of the mountain is going to be climbable as well. So this climbing structure is loosely based on the one at San Diego Zoo. We've got some log panels here and then we're going to be using natural branches and things like that to hold it up. And then a lot of it is going to also be supported on rocks. I've um, got a nice little arrangement here we made for our Komodo dragon. Um, we're going to use a modified version of that here. Um, obviously, if you've got three gorillas stood on one wooden platform, that is a lot of weight to carry. Um, and these uh, logs are probably not going to do the job on their own. So we want some rocks in here as well. And uh, we'll just keep moving these around and rotating them till we get a nice natural look to it. And then we'll put some enrichment up here so that the gorillas have a reason to come up here as well as the climbing. Uh, Got to have a tyre in a gorilla habitat for some reason, <laughs> not sure why, but that seems to be the, uh, the law in zoos. And we want multiple ways for the gorillas to get up here. In real zoos, you don't want to just limit it to one way to get up because if one gorilla is in a bad mood or is or maybe the biggest gorilla or whatever might prevent the others from getting up there you don't want sort of um, flashpoints like that you want lots of different ways for them to get up there all right the climbing's looking good it's time to move on to the mountain so we have this beautiful pile of rocks that we created for our recreation of Uluru in the outback and it is absolutely perfect for this job except for one tiny detail it's bright orange. So what we're going to do is use the trick that we used in the proboscis monkey habitat to swiftly replace each one of these rocks with one of the new lava rocks from the Oceania pack because this black colour is going to create an amazing contrast with the climbing and the plants in front of it. And then once we've got an arrangement, combine loads of them together to get a really natural looking mountain that's going to both cover up the shelter and make a really impressive backdrop for this habitat. So as we copy each piece across, we're going to give it a bit of a spin so it looks nice and organic. And then we're going to make sure that each piece rises slightly higher than the one next to it so we can get a nice mountain kind of shape going on. And then we'll take one of these pieces, remove the large piece from the bottom and copy it up above itself so that we can start getting the second level of this mountain in. And then we'll just move it so it fits in seamlessly. Uh, you can see it's starting to come together already. I'm not making it too high because I want you to be able to see the top of it from the guest viewing and make sure we get a really nice vista from those guest viewpoints where you really get the feeling that there's a, a mountain in the background. Now, in order to get gorillas into your zoo, you can't just waltz into Africa and grab one. You need to get them from another zoo. And luckily, I know just the place. Here at Tecton Zoo, our gorilla troop has been in residence for many years. We have three generations of gorillas in here now. You can see them here in their modernist habitat. And we're going to go in and take one of the daughters of the silverback and move her across to San Bernardino Zoo to start our new gorilla troop in a rather more natural looking habitat. All right, back at San Bernardino Zoo, it is time to finish the viewing areas. So we're going to make a custom wooden floor here using some of the hut base pieces and these little um, African decorative panels, the ones that don't have any paint on them. Uh, we're going to try and get something really rustic looking, um, just copying these across. I like these, got a nice texture on them and they're quite bright. The logs underneath I thought were a bit dark for this, I wanted them to stand out a bit more. So all we need to do is copy this arrangement across the front here where the moat is and then we can get a barrier in to prevent the guests from throwing themselves into the moat. So we're going to use the same fence that we created for the last habitat so we've got a nice bit of continuity throughout the area. Copy this across the front of the moat again along with all the wood panels that we just put in and then we'll do some work on the moat itself. So I want to add a little water pipe here with some water um, staining around it. That's always a nice little touch, makes things look realistic. And then we're going to add some decals where the water meets the concrete as always, just to give it a nice grimy look as it would do in real life. And then we're going to add some nice spiky foliage behind the fence above the moat, just to make absolutely certain that the guests aren't going to try and climb over the fence or anything like that. So it looks pretty rough at the moment, but what I'm going to do is sink that in. You can see I put a little extra barrier in there as well, just in case anyone managed to get over the fence. We don't want them falling into the moat. We'll put some mulch in as well, and that will keep our guests safe. Now we're going to build some log walls for the viewing points. 
And we're gonna be using the jetty support post from the Habitat tab. It's a really nice light colored unpainted log, really fits in with the sort of realistic theme that we're going for here. Not sure I've ever actually built anything with this before, uh, but it's got a much nicer color or a much more suitable color than the logs in the building tab. So we'll just make a nice random looking arrangement of them, get a little group together, and then we'll start placing this in to fill in all the walls. Making a little group like this means that we won't have too many straight lines. We can use quite a few of these in each part that needs a solid wall rather than glass, and we'll get a really nice natural look. We'll continue that along the rest of these walls. This makes the building really start to come together once we get this wood in here. And we're gonna do it exactly along the line of the glass here. And the reason for that is something we're gonna do in a second. One of the issues you can get in Planet Zoo is if you've used glass or any sort of see-through barrier, then you'll end up with guests standing there trying to see the animals, even if you've covered it up with building pieces. So I'm gonna replace the glass here with some of the log barriers instead. I actually really like the way it pokes through the wood that we've put in there. Gives you a kind of two-tone effect. So that looks really natural. And then we're just gonna put some roof supports in here to sort of tidy up the absolute mess that the inside of this roof is. So I'm gonna tie that all together with some beams. And once we've finished, it's gonna look like it actually makes sense rather than the kind of random arrangement that we've got here at the moment. You can see the two separate viewing windows that I spoke about now. On the left, you've got a view out onto the climbing and on the right, the view into their indoor shelter. So let's sort out the last little bit of the mountain and put an extension down here so that the gorillas can actually climb up and get up onto this part of the mountain right in front of that viewing window so the guests get an amazing view of them. You'll see some excellent close-ups at the end of the video of this in action. We'll make sure that they have a reason to come up here by dropping in one of these toys for them to play with. And then it's onto the sign. So this is gonna be one of the most popular habitats in the zoo. So I want a really impressive entrance sign for it as people come up to it. I'm not normally a fan of the Boogaloo font, but I thought I'd use it for this. It just seemed to fit really nicely. So we're gonna do some typography here and get that looking good. And then we will do what we normally do and copy it around behind itself to get a nice uh, drop shadow effect in there. And then we'll put this little gorilla sign behind it. We've got a little chunk of mountain here for it to sit on. Um, we're going to attach it to that with some poles and that's the sign pretty much done we've got one more thing to do before this epic habitat build is finished which is to sort out the inside shelter for the gorillas now zoos tend to go two ways with the indoor shelters for apes some try and make the indoors as attractive as the outdoors uh, which is very hard to achieve and doesn't normally succeed in my opinion but with lots and lots going on inside and some take a more utilitarian approach to the inside. And mainly, I must admit, due to the amount of time we've already spent on this habitat, I'm gonna go with the utilitarian approach here. So we're gonna have a lot of concrete and some fairly simple designs on the walls and try and build something that looks like a lot of the indoor gorilla habitats that I've seen in zoos. So we're gonna use a load of these plaster panels. So we get some higher areas where the gorillas are gonna have their nests and then some lower areas with some climbing apparatus and make sure that the keepers can get in and all about this shelter nice and easily. It's gonna take quite a lot of fiddling about to get it to work, but I really like the final effect. It just looks really smooth. And although it's pretty basic, like I say, this is very similar to a lot of the uh, indoor gorilla habitats that I've seen. So just a few more adjustments to this last panel here so we can get this looking nice and smooth. There we go. And then we're gonna use one of the most realistic pieces in the game, I think, this mural. Exactly the kind of thing you see a lot in zoos still. That's the finishing touch for the room. The finishing touch for the guest area is a little plant pot. And then finally, we're gonna put one of our banners up here. I absolutely love this shot of the gorillas that I got. You'll have seen a similar one in the thumbnail as well. And that, at last, is the build complete. Let's check it out. Oh, I'm so happy with this. The space really works for the gorillas. It seems to just be exactly right for them. The ratio between the open space and their indoor quarters, it just seems to be perfect. They really fill the space and the different viewing windows work so well. The viewing is really cool. I've done some of the cinematics from the actual guest perspective rather than close up how I normally do them. So you can see sort of exactly how it would work IRL. And these gorillas are just so charismatic. It's a lot of fun watching them explore their habitat, play with their toys, and check out all the different areas they've got, like the little bit of mountain they can climb on here, or their forage box that they've got down by the other viewing window here. I really hope you guys like this habitat. Let's take a look at the whole thing uh, with an aerial shot. I love this in the evening light. 
I think it was well worth the time spent on it. I'm looking forward to seeing this gorilla troop prosper in their beautiful new habitat. Let's check out the drone cam. This is where we started today, just that little green box in the top right. And this is where we are now. The Africa area is coming along so nicely. That is the forest pretty much complete. I want a little drink and gift shop uh, in the center, which I'll get to at some point, but I'm very happy with this as the start to the area. Finally, let's check out the Explorers monolith. Thank you so much to all of you who have joined. And as always, if you want to see your name in San Bernardino Zoo, then hit the join button on the channel and I'll add you on to here. Thanks for watching. Bye.